She seemed like the perfect wife and mother, beautiful, fun, and dedicated to her family. But something changed. Lori, where are your kids? How come you're not telling anybody where your kids are? Now charged with murdering her own children. Lori and Chad Daybell were indicted on two counts of conspiracy to commit first degree murder and grand theft by deception for the deaths of Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallow. Follow us down the rabbit hole as we trace Lori Vallow's path from all American mom to accused killer mom. You're watching an Arizona's family special, True Crime Arizona, The Lori Vallow Case. Thanks for joining us. I'm Morgan Lowe. And I'm Kim Powell. Two missing children, family frantically searching for them, and a mother who won't answer any questions. Their case gripped the nation, many people wanting a simple answer. Where were JJ and Tylee? This bizarre crime story reads like the script of a movie. A cult, missing children, dead spouses, and possibly murder. At the center of this case, teenager Tylee Ryan and her special needs brother, seven-year-old J.J. Vallow. The story starts in a quiet Chandler neighborhood. A family fight and shots fired. 911, where is your emergency? July 11th, 2019. You need police yes. or paramedic? Uh, both. Chandler police are responding to a 911 call. I got in a fight with my brother-in-law and I shot him in self-defense. A man named Alex Cox says he just shot his brother-in-law. Yeah, there's blood. He's, he's not moving. When police arrive on scene... Who else is in the house? Alex comes go out with his hands up and is told to sit on the curb. I'm going to have you have a seat right here on the Inside, curb. Charles Vallow lies dead on the floor of the living room, a gunshot wound to the chest. Alex tells police it was a family fight. There was a scuffle earlier with my sister and my niece. He says he was staying at his sister Lori Vallow's rental home. Five people were there that morning. Alex, Lori, Charles, Charles and Lori's adopted son, JJ, who's seven, and Lori's daughter, Tylee, who is 17. An argument started between Lori and Charles. Alex, who is staying there, comes out of his room. Tylee comes out of the room. There's an argument with Tylee. Alex claims that Charles hit him in the head with a bat. Alex goes back into his room, gets a gun, comes out and says that Charles came at him and he shoots Charles. Chandler police say the initial indications are that the shooting was justified. The evidence still points to self-defense. The self evidence still points to self-defense in this case, that is correct, as far as the Chandler Police Department investigation goes. But there is more to this story, and at this point, Chandler police are just scratching the surface. Are your detectives aware that they might have been a money motive involved in this? Not that I'm aware of. It's the first I'm hearing about it. Maybe that there was a life insurance policy on Charles Vallow? Nothing in our report, basically, from what I've read and what I've talked to the detectives, um, has that uh, information in it that I'm aware of. After the shooting, Lori, Alex, Tylee, and JJ don't stick around Chandler much longer. They pack up and at the end of August, move to Rexburg, Idaho. Rexburg is a very small, tight-knit town. It's a community where everyone attends the same church. Everyone is connected in some way. It seems like the perfect place to start over. But something strange happens shortly after Alex, Lori, and her children arrive in town. After just one week, Tylee disappears. Two weeks later, JJ vanishes. And in this new town, nobody seems to notice. Well, almost nobody. But we'll get to that in a moment. Meantime, Lori has a new love interest, a man named Chad Daybell. He is an author of what's called Doomsday Books, and he claims to be some sort of visionary that he has seen and spoken to Jesus Christ about the second coming of Jesus Christ, and uh, Lori kind of attracts to that. But there's one problem with Chad. He's married, until another strange thing happens. On October 19th, Chad's wife, Tammy Daybell, passes away in her sleep. There was a number of issues that just didn't look right. Two weeks later, with Lori's husband out of the picture and Chad's wife gone, Chad and Lori are married, but their troubles are just beginning. 
All we want is to know where those kids are. That's it. Larry and Kay Woodcock had been trying to get a hold of Tylee and JJ for a month. They are JJ's biological grandparents, and Kay is Charles Vallow's sister. She was suspicious about what happened to Charles, and now they suspect something is wrong in Rexburg. She was a good mama. She was a great mama. But about two and a half, three years ago, I saw a change in her, and I told Kay, I said, there's something going on. And she became a monster, just a monster. Do you wonder what changed and why she ended up doing what she did? Why is the question on all of these issues about every aspect of this case? It's just so baffling. Yeah. Rich Robertson is a private investigator who Kay and Larry hired to find the children. And as a result, he learned a lot about Lori and Chad and their bizarre behavior. Would you categorize or characterize what they were doing as being cult-like? I'm not sure I see this as a cult. It, it may have been a cult that was forming, but it wasn't a very big following. And unlike the kind of cult that people think of most of the time, they didn't have a compound, they didn't have a large group of people that were separating themselves from society and, and controlling their thoughts and beliefs. I mean, all these kinds of th things that you typically think of when you think of a cult. Uh, weren't quite there. But for now, Rich Robertson's main focus is finding those kids. So we started looking for the kids and, and didn't see them. And at that point is when Kay Woodcock contacted the Rexburg police and asked for a welfare check. And it was that welfare check that changed everything. Lori, I'm Lieutenant Ball, Police Department. How are you? You got a minute? So, JJ would be where? He's in Arizona. <laughs> Who's he with in Arizona? He's with one of my friends in Arizona. This is audio from that encounter. We moved up here in September. My daughter to go to BYUI. Your Run. daughter goes to BYUI? Yeah. Does she live here? Mm hmm we had two detectives over here trying to looking for you oh. a little while ago oh because i was at the store and they ran into well, probably one of your brothers in my the back brother here. and his friend probably oh who's that moving. chad chad from around here mm -hmm. chad the d-a-y-b-e-l-o mm -hmm. he just went passed away recently three statements three lies jj is not in arizona with a friend Tylee is not attending BYU-Idaho. Both kids have been missing for weeks. And Lori tells police Chad Daybell is her brother's friend. At this point, she's already married to him. The whole thing blew up at the point when Lori Vallow lied to the Rexburg police that day. But when the police return to Lori's apartment, she's gone. At this point, Rexburg police go public about JJ and Tylee. They're good kids, they don't deserve this. But now, it's not just the kids who are missing. Lori and Chad have disappeared as well. And there's another surprise in store. Lori's brother, Alex Cox, the last remaining witness who may be able to shed light on Charles Vallow's death and the missing kids. What is your emergency? Um, I have uh, a older male here named Alex. He's uh, He just passed out here on the in my, in my bathroom. Alex abruptly collapses at his home in Gilbert and dies in December. Alex has always been this kind of mystery to me. My overarching question on all of this is why? And why Alex? Why was Alex so involved in protecting Lori uh, to the extent he did to, to the point of, of committing crimes? We have two missing children and a growing number of dead adults, all of them tied to Lori Vallow. Now she and her new husband have split town. Coming up next, authorities catch up to the newlyweds on an island paradise where they're living like teenagers on the run. And we put a microscope on Lori Vallow's brother, Alex Cox. Is he the family hitman? And was he himself murdered? The answers when we come back. You're watching an Arizona's family special, True Crime Arizona, The Lori Vallow Case. Lori Vallow's two children have disappeared. 
Now she and her new husband have also vanished. But in this day and age, it's hard to stay out of sight for long. And the press, the police, and the growing public obsession catch up with them. The beautiful, relaxing beaches of Hawaii. They have attracted visitors for literally thousands of years. And in December of 2019, two of those visitors were Lori Vallow and her new husband, Chad Daybell. Lori and Chad just seem to be vacationing on a beach while everyone else is trying to find JJ and Tylee. And they're not answering any questions. The couple managed to stay off the radar for about a month, but then word gets out about who they are and nobody sees Tylee and JJ anywhere. Why have you guys been in Hawaii for so long? We knocked on their door, they didn't answer, but we could tell that the lights were on in the condo. But by that point, the neighbors were telling us, yeah, we actually haven't seen them in a, in a couple days now. It is a totally bizarre story, and I just hope they find those children. But time is running out. We have a search warrant for you guys. Police execute a search warrant looking for any evidence the kids are in Hawaii. Back in Rexburg, Kay and Larry Woodcock convince a judge to order Lori to produce the children, or at least prove they're okay. Bring the kids. That's it. Bring them. That's all we need to know. I don't care are, to ask her anything. Alive? I don't care. Show me they're alive. Just it. That's it. Show me they're alive. And I remember seeing uh, Larry the morning that the kids were supposed to show up. Today is the day, y'all. And Kay, a little bit more uh, hard-headed, but still hopeful. And as the day goes on, and we're kind of realizing, okay, she's not showing up. She's not going to do anything unless she is absolutely forced to do it. The more I got to know Kay and Larry, the more I could see their frustration growing and their hope dwindling. This comes to a head at the end of February. Lori and Chad are in Hawaii and they're living like two teenagers on the run, enjoying every day at the beach. And then that comes to an end. Lori is taken into custody and put in jail in Hawaii because she failed to produce the kids as she was supposed to. Yeah, she's aware of the charges. Lori is held on $5 million bond and extradited back to Idaho to face charges of ignoring a court order and child abandonment. Welcome back, Lori. The day she arrives in Rexburg, she's in shackles, wearing a bulletproof vest. I see the SUV with Lori coming toward me and it just stops right in front of me. Lori, where are your kids? How come you're not telling anybody where your kids are? And she looked over at me and then she just slowly looked away and covered her face. Outside the courthouse, it's a circus. People make signs and t-shirts with messages of hope for JJ and Tylee. We're just here for Tylee and JJ. We wanna know where they're at and um, we're hoping that they're alive and well. Lori makes a brief appearance in court. Chad is in the public seating area. So are the Woodcocks. And then, nothing. Three months go by with no breaks in the case. The kids are still missing. And then, on the morning of June 9th, 2020, investigators converge on Chad Daybell's property. We get this tip uh, from local reporters up in Idaho that, hey, it's happening, today's the day. And all we know is that they're in the backyard. And we start to learn that they're digging in the backyard by this fire pit. They had reason to believe that one or both of the kids were buried in the backyard. Once they removed some soil, there was a, a black, what I can best describe as a black plastic bag with a, a round object protruding through the dirt. This is Detective Ray Hermosillo testifying about what he found buried in Daybell's backyard. It was a, what appeared to be a small body, tightly wrapped in black plastic, uh, covered in duct tape. The body is JJ, and his sister Tylee's remains are found buried close by. Chad is arrested, and the mystery of the missing kids comes to a tragic and sad end. I don't know how they were killed. I mean, the, the, law enforcement still hasn't released a manner of death. So you don't know exactly how cruel it was uh, in the manner that they died.
but the disposal of their bodies uh, was certainly an attempt to hide the crime. What was it that led investigators to Chad Daybell's backyard that day? That's where Alex Cox comes back into the picture. He died seven months before, but has become the key to the case. And it turns out that it was Alex's cell phone. There were no eyewitnesses, nobody talked. It was cell phone tracking technology. Now, of all the witnesses who were on the scene when Charles Vallow was killed in Chandler, only Lori is left. Now we know Alex Cox is more than just Lori's brother. He's also come to be known as the family hitman, accused of assaulting estranged relatives. And now he's linked to the deaths of Tylee and JJ. And let's not forget, he also shot Charles Vallow. While Alex also died before he could ever answer to the law. Sometimes I call people as Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> baby lobster. Hello, Robert. Oh, so sorry to bother you, puppet, really. Could the funny man in the family also be the family's executioner? JJ and Tylee were buried in shallow graves in Chad Daybell's backyard with evidence of a desperate attempt to conceal what was left. Investigators were able to locate their bodies by using Alex's phone, which was pinging on a tower near Chad's home. All of the death investigations linked to Lori and Chad are also tied to Alex, who is also now dead. The timing of everything is peculiar, and it just makes you wonder what really happened and what were their goals. I want to see your emergency. Um, I have uh, a older male here named Alex. He's uh, he just passed out here on the on my, on my bathroom. On December 12th, 2019, Alex dies in Gilbert. According to police reports, Alex's wife, Zulema, told investigators he hadn't been feeling well the last few days and went to Mexico to pick up prescriptions. Months go by before the autopsy results are released. The Maricopa County Medical Examiner determined he died of natural causes due to blood clots in his lungs. There's different levels of toxicological screens and testing, and they did a basic one, which is totally appropriate in this case. You know, obviously it doesn't seem so now that there's maybe some extenuating circumstances around it. Dr. Frank Lavecchio practices medical toxicology and forensics, but is not connected to this case. He says Alex's autopsy was extensive, but there could be things that were missed simply because they didn't know to look for it. It's nearly impossible to kill somebody with a, a toxin or a drug, okay, How, and not get caught, okay. However, if you don't look for it, you know, you're not going to find it. Then comes the case of Tammy Daybell. She died in October 2019, while her husband of 29 years was spending time with Lori Vallow. The family declined an autopsy for the seemingly healthy mother of five and rushed to bury her in her hometown in Utah. The day before Alex died, her body was exhumed. You could still learn a lot from someone who's exhumed. I went through a lot of years of, of this kind of hard stuff and I was going to murder him. I was going to kill him. This recording of Lori speaking to a church group was released, prompting detectives to take another look at Joseph Ryan's death. He's Lori's third husband and Tylee's biological dad. He died in 2018 from what appeared to be a heart attack. His body wasn't found until several weeks later. If you were uh, going into this case, you have these three seemingly natural deaths. They all kind of sound similar in the fact that their heart just stopped. What would you look for? Obviously, history is very important. You know, what meds were the patients on? But I think they probably are going to do an extensive drug screen. You know, the Cadillac of drug screen. Gilbert police have since closed Alex's death investigation. Coming up next, prosecutors finally lay out their case for murder against Chad and Lori. And could Lori end up back here in Arizona to face additional charges in the death of her former husband, Charles Vallow? You're watching an Arizona's family special, True Crime Arizona, the Lori Vallow case. Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell are now facing murder charges for the deaths of JJ, Tylee, and Tammy, Chad's previous wife. Kim, you were the only local reporter in Idaho when this indictment was handed up. 
You've got some pretty deep sources on this story. Yeah, I've been working on this story for a little bit more than a year and a half now, and I've been to Idaho a few times, even Hawaii. And this is a case that everyone is talking about. So when we got a tip that something might be happening, we thought it was best to be there in person. Members of the grand jury deliberated and determined there is probable cause to believe the Daybells willfully and knowingly conspired to commit several crimes that led to the death of three innocent people. A grand jury indicted Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell in a slew of new charges, including first degree murder and conspiracy for the deaths of 17 year old Tylee Ryan and seven year old JJ Vallow. And Chad Daybell was also indicted on one count of first degree murder in the death of Tammy Daybell. Chad was married to Tammy for nearly 30 years and they have several children together. She died in October 2019, shortly after JJ and Tylee disappeared. Once investigators started connecting the dots, her body was exhumed. Her autopsy results have not been released, but the charges are telling. Chad was also indicted for insurance fraud and is accused of increasing Tammy's life insurance policy before her death. And investigators claim the couple was cashing in on JJ and Tylee's social security funds after they disappeared. The reading of the charges uh, was so emotional. Uh, it, it was just a really bad day. It, it was a bad day. JJ's grandparents, Kay and Larry Woodcock, were in Idaho when the indictment was announced. As you read them, it was like, I don't know, I, I, everything, it's like the world just stopped. This is where Tylee and JJ's bodies were found one year ago. This is Chad Daybell's backyard. Now right across the street from here, a memorial for JJ and Tylee that people in this small community like to visit. To think that they were out there. It's his birthday. It's uh, JJ's birthday today. And what a tragedy. In this small eastern Idaho community, Everyone says they've been waiting for something to break in the case. Right behind me is the courthouse, and over here, that's the sheriff's office, and right behind that building is also the jail. So in there somewhere, Lori Vallow has been sitting in a jail cell for more than a year now. From my perspective, I think they're gonna be sitting in their jails and saying, <clears throat> what have I done, you know, and, and this is real. This could be the death penalty. And it's time, I think, it's time for one of them to start singing like a, a canary. The Maricopa County Attorney's Office has also filed charges against Lori Vallow in the death of her then husband, Charles Vallow. Coming up next, how does Lori's brother, Alex Cox, play into these new charges? And what can we expect to happen next? Final thoughts from two reporters who have covered this case for more than a year. You're watching an Arizona's family special, True Crime Arizona, the Lori Vallow case. This case has a lot of characters and a lot of moving parts. One of those characters is Lori's brother, Alex Cox, who died in 2019. It seems like investigators believe he was the actual killer in at least three of these cases. So, Kim, how is that going to affect the case against Chad and Lori? Yeah, prosecutors are going to have to show that either Lori and Chad directed Alex to commit the murders or he had a substantial role in the actual murders, but we have not seen any of their evidence yet. What happens next? Well, this summer, Lori was deemed not competent to stand trial, so we're not sure when that issue is going to get resolved, but the prosecutor in the case has already decided he is going to seek the death penalty against Chad. Thank you for joining us for this Arizona's Family True Crime Arizona special, The Lori Vallow Case. Be sure to stay with us for the latest developments in this case. You're watching an Arizona's Family special, True Crime Arizona, The Lori Vallow Case.